Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Earth Day Liturgy at Grace Episcopal Church in Muskogee, Oklahoma. These unprecedented times of isolation prevent us from coming together as a real community bound together in love. We're prevented from our normal sacramental worship celebrating the Lord's Supper, but we also have a tremendous opportunity. We can go outside the boundaries of traditional worship to create a Sunday experience that expresses our common beliefs, our hopes, and our prayers. We share who we are and what we hope with a much larger congregation today. Thank you for joining with us. Blessed be the one God who has blessed us with this life, preserved us, and brought us to this day. This is the Collect for the Conservation of Natural Resources, BCP 827. Almighty God, in giving us dominion over things on earth, you made us fellow workers in your creation. Give us wisdom and reverence so to use the resources of nature that no one may suffer from our abuse of them and that generations yet to come may continue to praise you for your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. May God sow everything. May God have made humanity to speak it. Then the Lord God formed the human name Adam out of the dust of the ground, which is called Adama. The Lord took the human and put the human in the Garden of Eden to fill it and keep it. Then God said to Noah, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. For six years you shall sow your land and gather in its yield, but the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie follow, so that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave, the wild animals may eat. A reading from the book of Leviticus. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap all the way to the edges of your field. You shall leave them for the poor and immigrants in your land. The land shall observe a Sabbath for the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, but in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of complete rest for the land. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In the Lord's hand is the life of every living thing, and the breath of every human being. A reading from Psalms 19, 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all the lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about it to the end again. Nothing is hidden from the burning heat.
Ephesians 1, 9 through 10. God set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things to him, things in heaven and things on earth. The word of the Lord. John 1, 1 through 3 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. Second Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1 verse 15 the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near change your thinking about things and believe in the good news I would like to share some thoughts with you about the nature of time in particular what Paul said in his letter to the Ephesians about the fullness of time I'll give you an example of what that really means. When you're watching a drama and the hero swoops in just at the right minute to make the rescue, that's the perfect and propitious time or the fullness of time in Paul's words. We might also call it perfect timing or just in time. In terms of the system that God has put on this planet to make it livable, everything is out of whack and we no longer have the time to dally around and study the problem. Here's what one person said about time. This is a direct quote. We are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with such a fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. Procrastination is still the thief of time. Life often leaves us standing bare, naked, and dejected with a lost opportunity. The tide in the affairs of men does not remain at flood. It ebbs. We may cry out desperately for time to pause in her passage, but time is deaf to every plea and rushes on. Over the bleached bones and jumbled residue of numerous civilizations are written the pathetic words, too late. These words were first spoken by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in a sermon in April 1967 at Riverside Church in New York City. They were about his opposition to the Vietnam War and his immediate call to action. The words are meant 
to stir people's impatience in the face of a looming catastrophe. My dear wife always reminds me to be positive and hopeful, but I have been watching this planetary climate train wreck unfold, unfold since 1972, and the only hope I can give you is this. Our little church is still standing. We are small, but we're still alive. And from these bare bones of a church, God can build a far bigger church. And why is our little church and thousands of others like us so important? Because we are one of the last places on earth where we can model and live out the ethics of love, of self-giving, of sacrifice, and selflessness as a witness against the selfishness and greed that got us all into this mess. So that's my hopeful note for you. And when I said everything is out of whack, let me give one startling example. The Greenland ice sheet. There are several mechanisms no one anticipated that are contributing to what scientists call runaway acceleration. Today, the ice sheet is melting at a rate that is seven times faster than it did in the late 1990s. All those models that climate scientists use to predict the one foot sea level rise by the end of the century, by 2100, all those were based on 1990s data, the, at least for the melting of the ice sheets. That end of century date for the one foot sea level rise may come 40 or 50 years sooner than predicted. You need to understand something about scientists because it may be surprising to you. Scientists are very conservative. The task of science is all about being extremely careful, taking measurements, testing theories, looking for ways to shoot holes in other theories. Scientists are never going to go out in public and push some crazy half-baked idea that cannot be supported by data, mathematics, and serious solid physics. To do such a thing would risk their careers and they would be quickly discredited. But in the democracy of journalism and TV news, we often see science disparaged by some TV news personality whose last science class was in the eighth grade. I want to read to you what 11,000 scientists from 153 countries said in a signed statement in the peer-reviewed journal Bioscience late last year. I quote, we declare clearly and unequivocal, unequivocally that planet Earth is facing a climate emergency. To secure a sustainable future, we must change how we live. This entails major transformations in the ways our global society functions and interacts with natural ecosystems. The climate crisis has arrived and is accelerating faster than predicted. It is more severe than anticipated, threatening natural ecosystems and the fate of humanity. We have squandered decades of opportunity to act. We no longer have the luxury of business as usual for another decade. Part of the problem is that stable geologic and climatic systems unfold very slowly, and that's what we're used to. But when things get to a tipping point, stuff happens fast. Think of a tornado forming from storm clouds, or I'll give you a few more examples. At the end of the last ice age, glaciers retreated from the southern Missouri-Arkansas border to central Ontario, moving a thousand miles in 70 years. In the early days of our planet, Mars, a Mars-sized other planet, collided with Earth creating a, a rocky debris field that orbited the Earth. And that collection of rocks coalesced, coalesced sorry, into what we call the moon in a matter of a few months. Some astronomers also have models saying that Mars lost its atmosphere and its water in about a century. And that's what I mean by things can happen fast. The time to change is now. 
I can no longer stand before you as your priest and as a scientist and laugh at politicized jokes. It's not a laughing matter. It is a deadly serious matter. And there are things you can start doing today that will help. Drive less. Get a fuel efficient hybrid or electric vehicle. Take public transportation, carpool, walk, ride a bike. Leave those fossil fuels in the ground. Eat less meat. Pound for pound, beef consumes more land, water, and transportation costs than any other source of protein. Plus, Methane emissions from cattle are the second largest source of greenhouse gases, at least the methane gas on this planet. You will lose weight and you'll feel better as a result of that too. Plant as many trees as you can or pay somebody else to plant trees. If you own land, leave your trees alone. We need living trees, not more pasture. But now is the moment. Now is the time to act. Politicians bringing snowballs into Congress to disprove global warming should be shamed and not cheered. This is the most important moral issue you have ever faced, and it is the most important moral issue humanity has ever had to deal with. So I want you to think about a conversation you will have with your children or great-grandchildren. They will see coastal cities abandoned, populations of countries displaced, grain and cereal crop failures, political unrest, and wars over resource allocations. Do you want to look them in the eye and say, we did everything we could? Or do you want to shake your head and say, I'm sorry, we were too late. The prayers of the people. Bound together in Christ, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to God our Father. For peace from things that separate us from one another, and for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, especially All, all Saints, Saints Duncan, Duncan, the Diocese, Diocese of Kentucky, Kentucky, the Anglican, Anglican Church, Church of Melanesia, Malaysia. For this holy gathering and those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Edward, our bishop, Paulson, our newly elected bishop, Bob and Tom, our clergy, Tim and Jennifer, our wardens, vestry, delegates, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, Lord, have mercy. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its peoples. We pray for our leaders, especially Donald, Donald our president, president, Mike, our, our vice president, president Mark, Mark Wayne, Wayne, our congressman, James, James and Jim, Jim, our senators, Kevin, Kevin our governor, governor, and Janie, Janie our, our mayor. mayor. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For prisoners, the oppressed, and all those in need or suffering, especially Barbara, Barbara and family, family, the Blackwell, Blackwell family, family, Brad, Brad Brewer, Brewer family, Diana, Annel Lynn, John, Cameron, Catherine, Lisa, Liza, Susan and Dan, Jeffrey, Lacey, Jesse, Nicholas, Carson, Erica, Miller and May families, Tomlinson family, Bentley family, Barbara, Ross family, Amanda and family, Stacy, Doris, James and Shirley, Henry, Alistair, Cody, Marlene, Sherry, Barbara, Carrie, Monica, Gatlin, Catherine, Shirley, Judy, James and Shirley, Sherry, B, Ethan, and all those affected by the pandemic and those whose suffering is known only to God. We pray for those in the armed services. We pray for those who have died. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, our families, and those we love, we pray for those in our parish, Margie, Dorothy, Edna, and Diamond, and also those who are traveling. Lord, have mercy. Bless all those everywhere who give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy. 
for love of him who laid down his life for us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remembering our most blessed Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To, to you, O Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray that by repentance we can change our behavior, and with God's mercy our actions will help preserve the sanctity of life for generations of people and animals yet to come. Amen. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that the choices you make help create a better world for others. May God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.
spirit now always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by serving others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.